Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through an example in Excel that will show you how you can do sensitivity analysis uh, for capital budgeting projects. Sensitivity analysis essentially involves you looking at how sensitive your NPV or your IRR or your payback is to a specific input. Sensitivity analysis is uh, considered different from scenario analysis where we allow multiple inputs to change and then we see how that scenario with different inputs changes NPV or IRR. Uh, but I'm going to talk about sensitivity analysis and I'm going to show you how you can do this using a functionality in Excel called uh, data tables. Let's go. So suppose there's a company called uh, McMaster Golf. Uh, it's considering investing in a new line of golf clubs. And the question basically tells you that uh, when these new golf clubs are going to be launched, well, you're going to be selling some at a certain price, but then you will lose the sales of some of your high-end golf clubs and the price and expected loss of sales from those high-end golf clubs is given. And uh, fortunately, you will also gain uh, sales of your existing line of cheap golf clubs and uh, price and expected increased sales of those cheap golf clubs is given as well. You're also told the variable costs of these different types of golf clubs. Um, the fixed costs are given uh, for the new golf clubs as well. The question tells you that the company spent about 1.2 million in market research, which is a sunk cost, so we're not going to talk about it. Uh, the Question also tells you that the company spent about $160,000 on a marketing study to get all this information. Again, that cost has already been incurred. It's a sunk cost, so it, we won't factor that into our financial cash flow calculations. Uh, you're given some information on plant and equipment, tax rate, cost of capital, uh, networking capital. Basically, you have all the ingredients to figure out the financial cash flows or free cash flows from this project. So what I've done here essentially is that I've recorded all the inputs that are given to me. I've used these inputs uh, to figure out my financial cash flows. So notice that in each cell, I am referencing the numbers that are given to me. This is very, very important if you wanna do sensitivity analysis or even scenario analysis in Excel. And I use all those numbers to basically calculate my financial cash flows or free cash flows. And once I have those, I then calculate my NPV again using cell references. So for example, my NPV is calculated by using the discount rate of 12%, which is given, and by discounting these financial cash flows that I've calculated. Uh, in this video, I'm not going over the details of how I came about these calculations, but these are done the standard way. Financial cash flows are always calculated as EBIT into one minus the tax rate plus depreciation minus CapEx minus changes in networking capital. And that is essentially what I'm doing here. The point is that we now have our NPV, the IRR, the payback for these different inputs. And the question is, how does, for example, the NPV change if, say, the discount rate changes or the R&D expenditure changes or one of the fixed cost changes? And in fact, in this case, it asks us, so what is the sensitivity of the NPV to changes in the price and quantity sold of the new clubs? In other words, if the price of the new golf club changes or if the expected sales of the uh, new golf club changes, how would our NPV change? And I'm going to show you how you can do that using a functionality in Excel called data tables. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to create a uh, table like this, where you're measuring the price of new golf clubs and the quantity of new golf clubs. These are the two inputs of interest to us. We want to see how our NPV is uh, sensitive to changes in these quantities and to the changes in price. And notice that our baseline number for a uh, quantity of new golf clubs is 51,000 and uh, the baseline number for the prices is 1,010, uh, right? So if you scroll up, you see 1,010 is the baseline number for price and uh, 51,000 is the baseline number for quantity. And what I've done here is that I've chosen a few numbers below it and a few numbers above it. So for example, I've subtracted 3,000 and then another 3,000 and then added 3,000 and another 3,000. So what if the 
quantity of the new golf clubs is uh, you know plus minus uh, three thousand, and then another plus minus three thousand, well six thousand. And I've done the same thing for the prices of the new golf clubs as well. What I want to know is like how are NPV uh, changes if, for example, uh, the price is a thousand ten but say the quantity changes uh, to these different values. And similarly, if uh, the quantity of uh, new golf clubs is at 51,000, how does the NPV change with these different prices? So first, right here at the intersection of this table, I want you to say equal to, and I want you to give the cell reference of this NPV formula that you have over here. When you'll do that, it will basically copy that formula here and therefore essentially do the NPV calculation one more time. That's fine. Once you do that, then this is the second step. You click here from top left to bottom right, you highlight this entire table. This is an important step. Don't ignore it. Once you do that, then comes the third step. You go and click on data, click on what if analysis, and then click on data table. Now you will see it asks you what is the row input cell and what is the column input cell. Now don't panic. Just understand what are you measuring in the row? In the row you are measuring potential different prices of the new golf clubs. And your baseline NPV calculation is getting that information on the price from here. In other words, every time this number changes, it changes your revenue from the new golf clubs and therefore the cash flow and therefore the NPV. So you're in the row, your baseline number is coming from here, cell B13. So that's your row input cell. And similarly, in the column input cell, you're going to say, well, in the column, I'm measuring potentially different quantities of new golf clubs. And guess what? my baseline NPV calculation uses this number right here because every time this changes for quantity my NPV changes and so now when you click OK the table automatically gets populated to show you the NPVs for these potentially different prices and different quantities so as an example if your price remains at a thousand ten but you sell only 48,000 sets of new golf clubs, then your NPV will be 14,833 as opposed to 20,790. And so basically this column right here is showing you how sensitive is your NPV to changes in quantity. In fact, I can also calculate something like this. I say, you know, what is my NPV when I sell, say, 54,000 golf clubs? minus how much is my NPV when I sell 51,000 and that divided by you know how much is the change in the quantity of golf clubs sold so going from 51,000 to uh, 54,000 so basically change in NPV given a change in quantity and so when I do that math I get 1,985 so for every one additional set my NPV basically goes up by this amount and I can do the same thing for changes in prices. What I mean by that is that I say, what if I continue to sell 51,000, but now if the price changes from, say, 1,010 to, say, 1,040. And so my NPV in that case will change from 20 to 26. So the change in NPV is this minus this. And I can divide that by the change in price from 1,010 to 1,040. And so I get 179,218. So that, so that means that for every $1 increase in the price of the golf set, my NPV goes up by, well, 179,218. And so this is essentially how you can use uh, data tables in Excel to do sensitivity analysis for your capital budgeting projects. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning!